Most people agree that history matters. Unfortunately, contemporary research on strategic management has lacked historical appreciation and understanding. We, however, argue that historical analysis has a great deal to offer to strategic management research, and this is especially the case with strategy process and practice studies. And this is what this paper is all about. Thus, we offer approaches and methods with which one can conduct historically oriented strategic management research. And with that, we include examples ranging from American Civil War to Cold War Finland and from Cornelius Vanderbilt to the Intel Corporation. In particular, we introduce the notion of historical embeddedness, by which we mean the ways in which strategic processes and practices are embedded in and defined by the socio-historical environments. But if we take historical analysis seriously, we should understand that there's no one and only way of doing that. Hence, in this paper, we distinguish between and elaborate on three distinctively different ways of conducting historical analysis. And these are realist history, interpretive history, and post-structuralist history. In terms of realist history, as its name implies, it's all about trying to understand what actually happened and why. There are various methods of doing this, and in this paper we highlight the potential of comparative historical analysis. This is useful as it helps us to understand long-term strategic processes in context. Now, interpretive history is the second approach, and here we highlight the potential of microhistorical analysis. This is different from the previous one in that it allows us to understand strategic decision-making in context in terms of episodes or turning points, and in particular, elucidate the ways in which strategic practices both enable and constrain decision-making and action. Post-structuralist analysis is then different because it actually challenges our assumptions of what historical analysis is all about. But it does help us to understand the ways in which our conceptions of strategic management have evolved over time and the kinds of implications they have on strategic decision-making. This approach also allows us as researchers to be reflective, to think about our own assumptions and explanations. We offer a number of examples of such analysis in our paper. And what I want to conclude this with is to emphasize that historical analysis is not only useful to uncover what happened in more distant past, but it can also be applied to more recent cases. So we can very well examine, for example, decision-making practices in the Roman Empire, but we can equally use these methods to better understand more contemporary cases. And as we are now here in Helsinki, what comes to mind is the relatively recent rise fall and perhaps a new rise of the Finland-based Nokia Corporation. So there are plenty of opportunities for historically oriented strategic management research and we believe that strategy research has a lot to gain from historical analysis.